Hi, I'm Kevin from Pinterest, and today we're going to talk about how you can drive clicks to your website from Pinterest. There are four ways that we found to do this. The first is to be helpful with your pins. People are using Pinterest for everything from discovering things they want to do to actually doing those things in their lives. And so the more you can help people to see how the pins that you have on Pinterest can apply to the interest they have, the more those pins are going to get repinned and clicked on. The second is you want to use a tall aspect ratio. I'll talk more about that in a minute. You also want to use multi-product shots, or at least you can, that's one tip that can work. And then if you're going to use branding, which is oftentimes the right thing to do, you want to be sure to keep it simple and tasteful and integrate it. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute. First, let's dive a little bit more deeply into how you can be more helpful with your pins. There's three main ways to do this. The first way is with a really detailed description. This is important because when people come to Pinterest, again, they're looking for things that they can do in their lives. They use Pinterest as a planning tool. And the more detailed information you have, the easier it's going to be for people to see how the pin that you're promoting is going to map back to the interest they have and what they want to do in their lives. The second reason a detailed description is important is because the more details you have in that description, the more likely you are to have the types of keywords and search terms people are looking for on Pinterest. And search is a pretty big part of Pinterest uh, from a user experience standpoint. So let's take a look at this one. Like, How much detail do we mean? Well, here we have a handbag. And it says, with a sleek exterior and three interior compartments, this versatile tote functions perfectly from day to night and every meeting or errand in between. The stainless steel hardware gives it a touch of elegance, and like all our products, it's made from 100% vegetable tanned leather. Shop our entire collection of fine leather goods, including wallets and accessories, for the man in your life. Now, that's a lot of detail. Uh, but don't be afraid of that. That detail is going to help people to get a sense for what this product is, what your business stands for, and whether they want to buy your products or explore them more fully. There's also lots of really important keywords in there that people might be searching for. And if they do, you might have this pin even show up organically, which is going to reduce your cost per click. So for example, touching on the fact that there are stainless steel hardware, that's going to help people who might be searching for handbag with stainless steel. OK, let's dive into the next one. And that is a text overlay. You don't always need to do a text overlay, but there are times when the image itself isn't perfectly self-explanatory. Like this one. It's a picture of a bike. Now, if I'm skimming through Pinterest, I might think this is just a pretty photo of a bike. I might think this is about you know, bike trails. There's lots of different things this could mean. And the fact that it says up here in the text overlay, find your next city cycle, gives me an indication that I can expect that this pin is going to help me to find a bike to buy. And then let's look at this description too, because again, the description is always very, very important. Doing your errands by bicycle is a great way to burn calories and get to know your town. Discover the best urban bikes for your next adventure, whether it's for a downtown commute or just cruising to the corner market. The other thing I want to mention on descriptions is those of us who have spent a lot of time marketing in the digital advertising space are used to this notion of people having really short attention spans. And as a result of that, we try to make our descriptions and our text as brief as possible. There's a nuance here that's important on Pinterest, and that is, once again, that people are looking for things to do in their lives. So when people are scrolling through Pinterest on their phone, not all of these characters are going to show up, just the first 75 to 100. And then it's going to have the you know, three period ellipses, which will indicate that there's more if people want to click onto it. A lot of people are going to do that. They're going to tap that pin. It's going to expand to full screen on their phone or their tablet or their computer. And then they're going to be able to read the rest. So the people who do read and see the rest of that text are the ones who actually sought it out. They want to learn more about it. So I've seen pins that are very successful that have even upwards of 10 lines of text. Don't be too uh, afraid of having too much text on there. Just make sure that you're being really helpful with your descriptions. And again, a text overlay can help to sort of give it a headline and a pop that makes that image a little bit more clear to the use case. Next up, including a call to action in your description. In this example, and I'm just going to point to this pin over here, the description here and the images of uh, some plates and a table setting. The description is, from fine china to patio-friendly plastic, the perfect dinner party starts with the right set of dishes. 
explore our entire collection of unique tableware at prices up to 60% off the department store. The main thing to call out here is that the call to action is a little bit softer. It's not a buy now or click here or click now. Those types of fairly aggressive calls to action can actually hurt your pin performance. But a softer call to action reminds people that there's a lot more behind this pin. There's a whole business selling lots of valuable stuff, and that can drive clicks through to your website. Remember, Pinterest is a place people are coming specifically to look for things to do, and they recognize that one of the best ways to do that is to find content from businesses, because businesses sell and provide the products and services that people need in order to do things in their lives. So they're already sort of in that mindset. You don't need to be super aggressive, but be sure to include a soft call to action to point people to the value of clicking through to your website, and then you'll see a lot more clicks. So transitioning now away from uh, this principle of being helpful in your pin into a couple of other more tactical things, uh, you always want to use a tall aspect ratio on Pinterest. We recommend an aspect ratio of 2 to 3 to 1 to 3.5. So that means if your pin was 100 pixels wide, you would want it to be you know, less than 350 pixels tall, but somewhere in that range. And that's important because Pinterest is a vertically oriented user interface where people see all of these pins in columns. And no matter how wide your pin is, it has to get shrunk down to fit inside those columns that we use in the product. So if your pin is really wide but not very tall, by the time it gets shrunk down, it could be easily missed as someone is scrolling through Pinterest on their phone. By making your pins vertical, using that taller aspect ratio, you're going to stand out more and get a little bit more attention on Pinterest. And we want to make sure that people see and give good consideration to your pins so that they are more likely to click on them. Next up is the multi-product shot. These are really helpful because they just tell people loud and clear right there in the image that there's a lot more product behind this one. So you can use a multi-product shot to give a sense for what the products are that your business sells, some of the personality, but also show that there's more than just one thing. A couple of ways you can do this. Uh, as is the case with this pin, you can do it by actually having a bunch of products arranged. Um, sometimes that's done with this notion of organizing things neatly or taking a top-down sort of aerial shot. Um, this one is really interesting and expresses the personality of the business behind it. You could also even show a couple of different products in multiple frames of the pin, maybe three different beds that you sell or three different styles of sunglasses. And remember, too, that the pin is half image and half description. So there should always be a really good interplay between the image and the description. And we have that here. While the image is really strong, look at the description too. Any fashionista knows that accessories complete the outfit. With hundreds of sunglasses from top designers, your search for the right pair ends here. And with free shipping both ways, you don't have to settle for anything less than the perfect look. So in addition to seeing that there's a lot of sunglasses to consider here, the description drives home this point that hey, come check out the website, explore what we have because there's free shipping both ways. You can feel comfortable that you're going to get a good purchase from us. And that, of course, is just going to help people to feel more confident that it's worth their while to make that click. The last point I want to touch on here is branding. Any business on Pinterest wants to build its brand, of course. And so one of the best ways to do that is to tastefully incorporate your brand onto Pinterest and onto the pin. A few ways you can do that. One is by using rich pins. So if you are a business that sells products online, you can use rich pins, which are going to make sure that there's always this sort of icon from your business here and your business's name that will travel with this pin as it gets repinned and spread throughout Pinterest. You can also consider putting your logo onto the pin itself. And this can actually be helpful, helpful to build your brand and also to help pinners start to get a sense for what your business stands for. You just want to make sure that when you do that, the, the logo is incorporated or your product or your branding is incorporated into the pin design, and you don't use things like big blocks of text or make, make it look like a billboard or a banner ad. Um, those types of really loud branding actually can decrease your likelihood of driving clicks from Pinterest. So just to close it out, I want to recap the four things we've talked about. The first way you can drive more clicks to your business from Pinterest is by being sure that your pins are very helpful. We talked about three ways to do that. 
You can make sure your pins are helpful through providing a really detailed description, using text overlays, and including a soft call to action on the pin. The next way is by using a tall aspect ratio. Again, we recommend a 2 to 3 or 1 to 3.5. The third is using multi-product shots to communicate to people that there's a lot more variety behind that particular pin, and they should click through to explore the full selection. And finally, keep your branding and logos tasteful, and they can help to build your brand on Pinterest, as well as drive more traffic to your website. Thanks for watching.